Hi, I'm Rachel Siegel, and I'm the Executive Director of the Peace and Justice Center. I'm excited to be here to talk with two of our board members about what the results of the recent election mean to our work at the Peace and Justice Center. Um, I use she, her pronouns, and um, I'll let Kalia and TJ introduce themselves. Hello, I'm Kalia Livingston. I am the chairperson of the board of directors here at the Peace and Justice Center. Um, I've been with the organization for a little over a year now, and I'm happy to continue doing work. Hi, my name is uh, TJ Singare. I use he, him pronouns. Uh, I'm a new board member of the Peace and Justice Center, uh, and I'm excited to be in this conversation uh, and give my little insights. Cool. So I'll start off with a couple of prompts and then maybe we can just move into conversation. Um, maybe Kalia, you could answer this first. What do you think the, the risks and the benefits are of the recent election? What, what impact will that, could that have on our activist and justice movements? Um, well, I think the risks and I don't know if this is fully answering the question, but I, I think that because it was such a close call um, in the polls, I think obviously the opposing side of, um, of supporters for Trump might have a adverse reaction to what's taking place. So I think that could definitely affect some of um, the work that we do just in the sense of having to come and um, maybe create events in order to counteract some civil unrest that could come about or um, just kind of navigating through some of the, the angst that um, some Americans may be feeling right now. Um, I think some of the benefits also could be just um, having a semi more like-minded person in office. I personally feel like um, I, it was really hard for me to make a decision this election just because I don't feel like either candidate really could bring our country or Black people more specifically to salvation. So um, I think it's really important that people don't let up on the work that they've been doing, even though um, Biden, Biden is in office and may seemingly be more um, for some of the more progressive agendas that we align with at PJC. I think it's just really important that people maintain um, the momentum that they've had thus far and that we keep moving forward and pushing the needle in the right direction. Yeah, definitely agree with that, all those statements. Um, and I wanna just point out for anybody viewing this that as a 501c3 nonprofit organization, the Peace and Justice Center can't work for or against any candidates. And so we're trying to um, be mindful of that as we talk about the situation at large. So in case you're wondering why we don't just come out and say who we would prefer, that's why. TJ, did you wanna respond to anything Kalia said or the question? Yeah, um, you know, Kalia mentioned uh, how close uh, the votes were still. Um, and I think that's really important to remember because a lot of people have made the argument that um, these two candidates are quite opposite. Um, and one on one side is a person who has refused to follow science and uses harmful rhetoric, which can put um, marginalized communities uh, at risk and um, calls individuals illegal, even though we're on stolen land. And, you know, the list goes on and on yet there's still a, a large amount of the population that chose to elect that candidate. Um, and I think uh, it's part of the job of the uh, PJC to look and see what we can do to um, not only bridge that gap, um, because there seems to be a lot of uh, dis differences in the way that we view, or different groups of people in this country view the country, um, and uh, perceive what's going on and what the issues are that we're facing, um, but also um, speaking to these marginalized communities that are at risk um, and seeing what we can do to uh, better 
uh, meet their needs um, and make sure that they're feeling safe uh, and welcome in their communities. Um, and so I guess with that being said, Rachel, I'll, I'll ask you a question. Um, what do you think that the PJC is going to change anything that we're doing um, because of this election or to um, better or to focus on some of uh, the points I just brought up? Or do you think that what we've been doing so far is pretty in line with that and will continue to be going in that direction? I think that what we've been doing is pretty in line with it, given our limited capacity. You know, we're a small, scrappy organization and we can only do so much. And the the response of the public um, after the election in 2016 was that lots and lots of people got mobilized to join the work that we've been doing for 41 years and that many, many groups have been doing for much longer and shorter amounts of time. So people joined in and there was this, this real swelling of, of interest and, like I said, mobilization. And I think one of our jobs now is to continue doing the work, continue holding the spaces that we've been holding and creating opportunities in the ways that we have, and somehow keep a fire under people's butts, especially white Vermonters who are likely to become complacent and think it's good now. Like the partying in the streets, I can understand, and it was an amazing feeling to share that collective joy. It has been a long time, uh, but part of me really wrestled with it. I was like, what are we joyful about? Like, we now have an administration that has in the past supported wars and all sorts of violent policies nationally as well. And that is not someone who's a friend of the Peace and Justice Center's work. So while I think we'll keep doing the same work, we'll have more challenges to keep people motivated. And so we're gonna have to really shine a light on the fact that things aren't fixed when there's a Democrat in office. Mm -hmm. That is not the fix. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely agree. I feel like too many people have uh, viewed this, the election outcome as the end of all problems when in reality, it's far from that. Mm -hmm. Right, because not only did the person who a lot of folks wanted to win, win, but like you said before, TJ, like hundreds of millions of people voted for someone else. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, they're still here. We're living with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think as a Black Vermonter, um, I didn't have that same reaction of wanting to have joy and celebrate in the streets because I still have a lot of... Um, not necessarily fear, but anxiety and um, uh, just about the fact that people might lose esteem at this point and, and kind of, they feel like they're at the end. So I, just to reiterate what I said in the beginning, I do hope that people can continue to um, uphold the same momentum that they've had over the past nine months or so and carry that out throughout this administration, just so we can continue to make the changes that we're hoping to see in, in the peace and justice that we um, strive to bring into our communities at the center. Yeah, and I, I think it's worth pointing out also that we still have this tremendous challenge of living in a pandemic, you know, that, that it makes the work much harder to do. We're not used to organizing with these restrictions. And I think if people lose motivation, they're going to be sort of doubly losing motivation just because it's it's exhausting to be living in a pandemic. It's hard to do anything extra, like getting by is super challenging in a lot of ways. It's scary. People are dying. People are at risk. Um, it's been challenging to mobilize overall, I think, throughout um, this period. So um, I just hope that not too many people see this the election results as symbolism for we did it and more so like just kind of see it as a iota of change that their work has brought up brought and that we can continue to keep moving one of the metaphors that i heard that that resonated for me it's not perfect but was that um that biden was the candidate that um well i heard two different ones one is that he is a tourniquet you know, that getting him elected means we're not gonna bleed out. And so we can work on some of the healing and the changes that we need. 
So that's a tourniquet is better than bleeding out. <laughs> um, and then, well, what was the other one I was about to say? Um, oh, it was who would we rather fight against? Mm. You know, in our resistance work, would we rather fight against Biden or Trump? So are we in better shape now with Biden there? I'd say we're in better shape because we have uh, something closer to reasonable to fight against, um, but in worse shape because of what we keep saying and going back to about the complacency and that, that people might stop fighting and resisting and organizing. Yeah. Do either of you have any thoughts as to um, how to keep people motivated and in the fight and um, mm -hmm. keep people eager to make change uh, even when a lot of people have felt like the change has been made. I think we need to put emphasis on specific goals that we're trying to achieve and make sure that we keep enlightening the community on um, very specific details of things that are taking place in Vermont and beyond, because I think that having tangible evidence of things is, is keeps it more prominent in people's minds that there's still more work to do. Exactly. Continue to highlight individual situations where people are experiencing oppression and violence, hatred, and then also highlighting things on a policy level and looking at data broken down uh, by race and by gender and seeing how discrimination happens on multiple levels on the personal and then also on the systemic and institutional. I think that that's, you know, that we can continue to say yes when people reach out for support. We continue to train up young activists. We continue to offer our educational programs. Um, we continue to help people see the links between all the different movements. And and we highlight, 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 just like Kalia said, like we just need to keep shining a spotlight so that so that people don't forget because you know it's racism's not gonna go away, violence isn't going away, like not on its own. We we can undo it over generations. Um, but it's not gonna undo itself. Sorry, Rachel. No, you go. Um, I think a lot of Americans definitely have this conditioning, including myself at times that there's one entity that can come in and, and save us. So um, I think it's really important to remind each other that we have to be the change that we want to see and take accountability for that. And um, like we're saying, just keep highlighting these specific scenarios and statistics and, and hopefully that will keep people's um, keep people present in the movement. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I mean, I feel like especially um, to the people who live in um, Vermont, I feel like we live in our own little bubble. Um, you know, the some of the lowest COVID rates. Uh, and uh, like you said, like people were out dancing in the street the other day, but um, that's not the reality for a lot of people uh, around this country and around the world. Um, and it's, it's really about paying attention to those who, um, aren't uh, privy to the same uh, lifestyle that we are, or that many people are. That's a really good point. And there's local elections that we haven't really talked about at all, but when I think about who was elected governor in Vermont, um, I feel uh, really sad and discouraged by how short people's memories are because this was the governor that vetoed our climate solutions bill, vetoed our, the increase in minimum wage, stood in the way of all sorts of legislation that help poor and working people in Vermont. And because he didn't mess up with COVID, because he did the things that any sane person would do, everyone gives him a pass. Um, so I think we need to, you know, sort of going back to the pandemic, we need to be able to hold multiple realities at the same time. Like, yeah, he did a good job with the pandemic. Vermont has, you know, until recently <laughs> been on a really good trajectory, but that doesn't mean that he did good stuff for the people before that or that he will going forward. So we need to continue organizing, um, working with state legislators, working with select boards and city councils and you know, really getting, if we're gonna do policy work, doing it really on a micro level 
um, when we can't do it on the macro. Definitely. Do either of you have any closing thoughts? I have a lot of opinions about this, but I don't know if they're appropriate for this conversation. <laughs> so. Oh, now you got me curious. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, go ahead, Clea. Oh, no, go ahead, TJ. I was just rambling. Um, no, uh, another question I had. Um, Rachel, what do you say to um, these folk in not only Burlington, but also Vermont who can't relate to um, those who were out dancing in the streets, you know, maybe to those people who uh, were satisfied with the election, but are really eager to push for more change and to um, get more involved and just really revamp the spirit of uh, activism for um, the greater good of everyone, I guess. I guess I would say we see you, first of all. You know, we see, we see that it's not all good for everyone, that this hasn't fixed the problems, that there were plenty of people who still felt at risk going into the streets, you know, that, that trans women of color, you know, still aren't safe to be out in crowds necessarily. And that, you know, people with chronic illness and disabilities might not have been able to get to the streets even. So I guess the first thing I would say is that we see you. We know, we know that there's deep healing to be done and that we are here to do that work with you. I really would like to um, get to a place where we're not voting between the better of two evils. Mm -hmm. I personally feel like um, since black people could vote, which is crazy that it had to be legalized for black people to vote, that um, the majority of black people have had to vote based on survival. Um, and I think this election, when talking to a lot of white people, they kind of reiterated that for themselves. I think this was one of the first times in my life that I've seen white people kind of frantically not knowing what to do during an election because they too had to vote um, do for their own survival in a, in a way. So I don't know, I think that that personally is, is a form of voter suppression. And I think that it um, makes me feel like as a black Vermont, as a black American, I don't have that much choice or control to contribute to our democracy. So I hope that the through the work that we do in this organization, we can kind of spread that to other nonprofits and and hopefully attract some better candidates in 2024. Mm, I like that. Mm -hmm. I definitely agree. Yeah, lots of work to be done, that's for sure. We're not gonna be bored. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. <sighs> all right. Either of you have anything else you wanted to ask or share? I don't. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm, I'm all set. No, it is a pleasure getting to work with both of you. I mm -hmm. feel truly grateful. As do I. Thank you. Same. Okay. It was nice Bye, chatting. Everyone. Yeah. Talk nice to you soon. Chatting with you too. Well, later actually. Bye. <laughs>